Oh my god! 19 kills. Oof. What's up, scholars? It's your professor here, Enlightened Enlisted, and today we're going to be going over how to be a better pilot in Enlisted. We're going to be covering how to bomb, dogfight, and which aircraft I would recommend you use in each campaign. Let's get into this. So in order to be a better pilot, you need to understand the roles the aircraft in-game currently are by type. Now I want to stress just because a plane is in this role doesn't mean it can't carry out the function of the other plane types, but they just aren't as specialized in that aspect. Right now we have three roles in Enlisted. The fight Fighter, attacker, and the bomber, with these roles playing a little bit different from one another. First off, let's take a look at the attacker or close air support role. This is by far the most popular type of aircraft in Enlisted, with planes like the Stuka or the SBD-3 dominating enemy armor or concentrations of enemies. The attacker role is also the most versatile in the game as you have like things like the BF-110 or the P-38 types of planes that can also dogfight pretty decently well. Depending on what type of attacker aircraft you have will determine how you play. It. This basically boils down, do you have rockets or just bombs? Plane types like the Stuka are better at dive bombing, which is where you come in at a steep angle, dropping your bombs just before the target and then rapidly pulling up. Pulling up does not necessarily mean going straight vertical. It could mean just turning to the left or the right, but you need to be climbing and using that speed to rapidly get back to the rearm point for another pass. Kaz aircraft is great at taking out enemy armor, who tend to camp in the gray zone as well. Generally speaking, these aircraft aren't great at strafing or shooting down enemy aircraft, their armament is just too weak at this point. Now the other type of attacker aircraft such as the IL-2 or the P-47 are more universal aircraft. They have cannons, rockets, bombs, or maybe all three. For these aircraft, the best practice is to come in low and slow, use your rockets to pound enemy infantry, and then conduct a strafing run on the way back. If you're lucky to have a bomb payload as well, I usually drop them on the strafing run side of the attack. I'll cover later in the video how to drop your bombs accurately when you aren't into a dive. Now I mentioned earlier earlier that you can dogfight with these types of aircraft for sure, but you are still at a disadvantage to say like a fighter in those engagements. But if you're a true Chad, you can just get behind them and use your rockets to take them down. Planes I recommend for this class are the P-38, the BF-110, the Stuka, and the P-47 in Normandy. Moscow, I will go with the IL-2 and then again the Stuka. For Tunisia, I gotta go with the SBD-3 and the Bureau of Fighter for the Allies. The Axis have yet again the Stuka and the BF-10 is decent at strafing, but its lack of rockets limited in my opinion. For Berlin, I find that air power is a little lackluster due to the maps, but some levels do allow you to have some decent calves. For the Axis, I guess I'll go again with the Stuka, and then for the Soviets, you have the IL-10 or the IL-2, which are both great at strafing ground targets. No one really gives a shit about Stalingrad, but if I had to pick, I would go with the Su-2 for the Soviets, which is a very decent dive bomber in my opinion, and if you had any question on what I was going to pick for the Axis, you guessed it, it's the Stuka. Stuka OP, bro. Alright, so now that we've covered the most popular, let's get into to the least popular, the fighters. Fighters are pretty lackluster in the fact that you aren't going to be very effective in the sense of enlisted as a game as a whole. While these aircraft have a lot of machine guns on them, they're not very good at strafing as opposed to the attacker role, so generally these guys are only for dogfighting. But there are a few exceptions to this rule, as many of the BF-109s and the P-51 are great for precision strikes against ground targets with their bomb loads. For those guys, you gotta think of them as just a faster and more maneuverable Stuka. Since their bomb load is never as high as it would be with, say, other attacker aircraft, you've got to be very precise when you drop. So drop at a very low altitude and right on top of the target. Your primary role, however, is to have air supremacy. Trust me, on Normandy, you do not want to leave a P-47 unchecked as the Axis. So the quickest way to take down an aircraft is by sniping the pilot, because the aircraft damage models in the game are a bit out of whack. Boom and zoom tactics are the best way in order to get that enemy pilot coming in high and then shooting for that cockpit. You'll be able to take them out very quickly. Now, in order to take out the pilot while you are in a turn fight, you need to pop on your combat flaps and then do a lead pursuit in order to get your nose up above the aircraft so you can strafe it while it comes into your gun sights and usually that will take out the pilot. Now for going after enemy bombers it's completely different. I avoid the cockpit for whatever reason I seem to be unable to kill the pilot when I aim for that. So what I do is I go for the engines instead because if it can't fly it can't bomb. So if you should find an enemy on your six inside of a fighter you're going to need to conduct what we call a flat scissors maneuver. If you're a War Thunder player you're probably familiar with 
this, and you're probably familiar with the other term, rolling scissors, but the latter is pretty harder to pull off and enlisted, so you need to be like Maverick, hit the brakes, and let them fly right past you. To slow down, use your flaps or even your landing gear, which literally has no purpose in this game right now, but it will slow you down quick. German aircraft like the Fokker with 190 have really good roll rates, and you can just continuously do a barrel roll in order to make it where they'll run out of ammo. Remember, if they don't have any kind of ammo, they can't shoot you, and then they become very exposed. A common tactic that I'm seeing a lot of players do in-game is dipping their nose and then raising it very quickly while cutting their throttle in order to get people to miss and push past them. However, when you're on that raise part of the maneuver, you actually really expose your pilot to gunfire, and that's generally where I take out enemy fighters who are conducting this maneuver. It'll work for inexperienced pilots, but for people that have played this game for a while, it's just not going to work, and I would not recommend it. Again, I would avoid fighters like the Hurricane or the Spitfire, which have no bomb loads because you're going to get pretty bored just flying around shooting down other aircraft. And at that point, you're better off just playing War Thunder. All right, let's get into the final class of the bombers. These guys carry a bunch of bombs and can devastate a push on multiple bombing runs. Planes like the JU-188 or the A-20 are a nightmare. If you remember what it was like before the plane nerf, you used to be able to spawn in a plane and then bomb everyone back at their spawn right when they came into the game. Thank God they changed that, but everyone was using the bomber class. Now it's fallen a little bit out of grace for the attacker because of this nerf and we are going to go into how to make this guy a lethal machine. Unlike the CAS bombers, you're going to be conducting what we call a glide bombing or altitude bombing run. What is glide bombing? Well, oddly enough, it was something that naval bombers conducted in World War II. You're going to drop your throttle, go to a 30 degree angle, and then level out dropping your bombs, continuing on a straight trajectory. This is the most accurate way for you to drop your payload, and again, be sure to drop your ordnance before you are over the target. Altitude bombing is what you traditionally think about when you see like a formation of B-29s. Well, enlisted, we don't have bomber sites yet, so it's not really going to work as well, but we can modify it in order to have some lethality success. What you wanna first do is figure out your bombing run path, and usually I like to do that parallel to the enemy line. Then you want to come in low and slow, basically cutting your throttle to zero, flatten out, and drop all of your bombs at once. When you do that, you get the effect of like a carpet bomb. This is super effective when you are defending a point or you want to bomb like say a road. I tend to use a bomber more when we're on defense. These guys are pretty helpless against enemy fighters or other aircraft, but you can head on with a few of these because they do have those front mounted cannons, and you do have the rear gunners added to the game. Now right now they're currently not that effective, but hopefully that will change in the near future. If you want to stay enlightened on enlisted news, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification so you never miss an enlightened moment. If you play Normandy, the A-20 and the Ju-188 are great bombers. In Moscow, the Soviets are really the only ones that have a bomber, and I would say the PE-2 is the best of them all. Tunisia, Berlin, and Stalingrad right now do not have any dedicated bombers, but I'm sure that's going to change in future updates. Some general tips when flying, it is significantly easier for you to fly with your mouse than your keyboard. You need to always be looking around around after a bombing run or heading back to the rearm point because this is when you are the most exposed for an attack of AA or even other aircraft. You can also see where you want to bomb next if you're flying low enough and turn your plane at a 90 degree angle looking down. Remember that you don't have to attack on a straight line from the rearm point and it's honestly better for you to take some time to figure out the best way to attack. The direction is going to be very important with your attack runs to maximize enemy casualties. Another big tip I can give you is the lead indicator is just a guideline. It does not mean you're going to get a direct hit if you keep shooting at that, so you need to adjust your fire based off of what you're seeing. When you're aiming your rockets, remember they're on the wing and not the front of your plane, so you're going to need to adjust accordingly. I usually put my crosshair above and to the right, that way that the left wing rocket will hit its target. If you're wondering where is the best place to bomb, I generally say it's directly on or behind the point if you're attacking, and directly in front of the point if you're defending. Hopefully you have teammates marking enemy tanks, and if you aren't seeing marks, don't be afraid to ask for them. MG nests make great targets as well because their tracers are very easy to see from the sky. Normandy is one of the big maps that come to mind with this, and I would suggest repeatedly attacking those with rockets. You should prioritize targets based on what's going to help your team win. Usually it goes in killing the enemy air, then tanks, then infantry. Planes are a tool to help you win and not something you should be doing just to rack up kills by suicide bombing. Seriously, 
don't be a suicide bomber. If you're curious about if Enlisted should have SPAA added, well, check out this video here and to hear my thoughts about that. Also, down in the comments, let me know what your favorite Enlisted plane is. And while you're down there, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, scholars, hit those books and hit those bottles. Cheers.